Uh, I am Dr. Vinod Paul. I am a pediatrician by training and I am currently a member of the apex think tank of the government of India called the Niti Aayog, where I anchor health and nutrition for the country. Today we will talk about child health, trends and challenges, uh, challenges uh, toward the sustainable development goals. Our goals are to uh, assess the post-MDG scenario in child health, what are the conditions which lead to child mortality, and how we will achieve the SDG-driven child health goals. We have made remarkable progress over the last uh, quarter of century. Uh, there are estimates of uh, reduction of the size of 9 to 17 million lives being saved, uh, under 5 child lives being saved, but there are huge challenges. Uh, we, uh, we estimate that even by the year 2025, there will be as many as 5 million under 5 child deaths each year, and that's unacceptable. 97% of these deaths are in the developing world, and most of these are highly preventable because they are due to uh, infectious uh, conditions like pneumonia and diarrhea, and in many of them, of course, undernutrition is uh, the uh, underlying condition. Uh, two million of these deaths are actually preventable by using the vaccines, and these vaccines are available. There are, therefore, uh, interventions uh, available to the world which, if given, can address this huge burden of under five child mortality, which is still plaguing this planet. Uh, we do note the fact that under five mortality has decreased as much as 58% from 1990 to 2016. It dropped from 93 per thousand live births to 41 uh, deaths per thousand live births. But there is a huge swath of the world uh, in sub-Saharan Africa where uh, the under five mortality rates are exceptionally high. But there are also examples uh, that remarkable success in under five mortality reduction is possible even over a short period of time, particularly in the flow of uh, things uh, triggered by the MDG's effort. For instance, in India, over just one year between 2015 and 2016, there was a decline of 9% from 43 to 39 per thousand live births in just one year. It's therefore possible that if we continue to intensify our efforts uh, stemming from the MDG's efforts, we can make a huge, huge change in reducing under five child mortality. One core of uh, under five mortality, which is extremely important in our plans to reduce child mortality is in relation to newborn deaths. Neonatal period is the first four weeks of life and in this map, you can uh, notice that the world seems to be a distorted place uh, because this map encompasses the size of the countries uh, going proportional to the size of newborn mortality burden. You can see uh, that uh, the Americas look very thin because there is very low newborn mortality and Asia, particularly South Asia and Africa look very fat because that's where most of the newborn deaths currently are. You must appreciate that in 2016, 2.6 million deaths, uh, roughly 46% of under five deaths occurred during the newborn period. And this amounts to the stupendous 7,000 neonatal deaths every day, even at present, as you would note. Globally, uh, newborn mortality has been declining, but these are marked by disparities among regions. Uh, neonatal mortality was highest in the sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, as you can also notice from the map that I referred to earlier. Nine times excess rates are seen uh, in these countries overall compared to a high-income country. So there is a huge gap between what is possible by way of low neonatal mortality rates and where we are in this context. Uh, and at the current rate, at as many as 60 countries will not achieve the SDG goal of achieving 
neonatal mortality rate of 12 deaths per thousand live births by the year 2030 or less than that. 60 countries is one third of the world uh, in terms of number of countries. Therefore, the core challenge within under five mortality reduction relates to improving newborn health. Why do children die? What are the conditions because of which ultimately child dies? Uh, if you look at the graph uh, carefully, you would notice that the most important uh, broad condition that leads to under five mortality deaths is actually a neonatal condition, namely complications of preterm birth when the baby is born prematurely before the timing is ripe, uh, the organ systems are immature and the uh, conglomerate of those immaturity conditions uh, contribute to 16% of under five mortality uh, pneumonia uh, accounts for as many as 15%, another 15% of uh, under five deaths. Out of uh, this, 13% uh, is post-neonatal pneumonia and 2% is neonatal pneumonia. The third condition, which is responsible for the major chunk of under five mortality is intrapartum birth complications. We used to call them birth asphyxia. This is a condition where the baby does not breathe at birth, is unable to transition from fetal life to extra uterine uh, life. And this accounts for 11% of under five mortality. Then we have uh, continuing menace of diarrheal disease, uh, which is still responsible for as many as 9% under five deaths. And these deaths have no business to be there because we know how to prevent it uh, with wash, with sanitation, uh, and with rotavirus vaccine in particular, and also we know how to address it by continuing feeding, uh, breastfeeding, oral rehydration solution, and zinc. Uh, but still, as of now, we still have 9% under five deaths due to diarrheal disease. Uh, this is followed by malaria-related deaths, 5%, uh, as well as 5% congenital malformation deaths, but also in between we have 7% attribution of under five deaths due to newborn systemic bacterial infections under the rubric of sepsis. So these are the major conditions. You would notice that 46% uh, uh, or so deaths are in the newborn period and neonatal conditions such as premature Prematurity complications, intrapartal complications, neonatal sepsis continue to dominate the overall cause by, as you have seen here. Uh, therefore, there is no doubt that uh, the first month of life is uh, so very crucial uh, for us uh, to safeguard the health of uh, our children. Uh, again, as you have uh, uh, seen earlier, our challenge uh, is highest in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, how do we prevent child deaths? How do we avert child deaths? Well, uh, there are uh, specific interventions that are age-specific, and these start from maternal interventions because the neonatal component of mortality is so much dependent on the health that the fetus accrues during fetal life in the mother's womb. Then there are intrapartum uh, care issues uh, which address the problem of uh, uh, birth asphyxia, problem of early uh, interventions for prematurity-related conditions, and of course, uh, preventing neonatal sepsis. So the, the age-specific interventions uh, focused on newborn care, focused on preventing and managing diarrhea and pneumonia, uh, as also addressing the fundamental problem of undernourishment as a very important risk factor for uh, ill health as well as mortality needs to be addressed. Uh, there is also a quality gap. Sometimes our coverages go high, but if those coverages are of not of the, the optimum quality, then it's a missed opportunity. We need to get more and more health from the existing health systems. So coverage alone is not sufficient. The quality should be optimum. And they said that two million li newborn lives, for example, could be saved each year if we just optimize the quality uh, assurance, or quality gap is taken care of. Of course, we need to invest in uh, health systems, including uh, primary health care, where there is 
uh, a huge action in relation to safeguarding the health of our children. Uh, SDG goal three deals with ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all the ages. Target 3.2 relates specifically to un under five child uh, health. Uh, the goal states as follows, that by the year 2030, we aim to end preventable deaths of neonates and children under five years of age, with all countries aiming to reduce neonatal mortality to at least as low as 12 per thousand live births, that's 12 or less, and under five mortality to at least as low as 25 per thousand live births, so 25 or less. Neonatal mortality rate, 12 or less by the year 2030, under five mortality rate, 25 or less by the year 2030. This is the aspiration that the world has set for itself. 48 countries, however, at the current rate of effort and interventions and energy and resources will still not be able to achieve SDG targets of child health. Uh, these are the estimates as of now. Of course, most of them are in Sub-Saharan Africa. The fact remains that close to 50 countries have a huge challenge to be able to achieve this global aspiration and therefore special efforts and efforts that are targeted to the health of mothers and children would be required for us to make a difference. In conclusion, shall we say that undernourishment as the key underlying condition is important for us to always remember. We are also mindful of the fact that overnutrition in children is also emerging as an issue. The new challenges also include how to ensure intact survival, particularly in the context of neonatal health, where, wherein the developing brain uh, is very vulnerable to long-term ill effects of prematurity, of birth asphyxia, and of the care that we impart, which sometimes has unwanted consequences. So ensuring intact survival, ensuring that the child develops both in terms of physical development as well as mental and cognitive development is a challenge for us to continue to be mindful of. Uh, as we look after survival, chronic diseases of children such as cancers, the renal diseases, heart defects, and other birth defects would appear important for us to address and also there's an emerging uh, burden of autism, disabilities, and child abuse, which will uh, require our continuing attention as we move from survival to quality survival. <laughs>